first step underneath the flying deck, there are two giant, first of all, there's two big tubes, about 18 inches in diameter, right underneath the flight deck. Inside each of those tubes, there's two giant pistons here. Each of these is about 15 feet long and weighs two tons. There's one on either side. Some pieces in the middle that hold it all together. And there's one piece that sticks straight up in the air and actually comes up onto the flight deck. That's called the shuttle. That's this piece right here. So that's actually attached to those pistons underneath the flight deck. So that's what we attach the airplane to. We attach the airplane to that shuttle mechanism. So now we put the airplane in tension, which means we move that shuttle forward very slightly until everything's now nice and tight. Okay. Next thing we do, right behind the airplane is a big white solar steel plate in the flight deck. It's called the JBD, Project Glass Detector. There's the bridge after Coronado and there's Coronado line. We're going to raise that JBD up in the air about 60 degrees, just like this picture right here. And that's so that when the pilot eventually speeds up his engine with full power, all that exhaust goes out the back, hits that plate, and it bounces straight up in the air, and it doesn't bother anybody. So if we didn't raise that JBD, the pilot was to raise his engine with full power, and it would blow about a dozen seconds right off the flight deck. It would also damage other airplanes. So we wait to make sure that that JBD is raised and locked in place before anything else happens. As soon as that's done, there's a number of things that are going to happen. Some sailors are going to come out from standing alongside here. They're going to come out and pull on the plane and check to make sure all the hatches are closed, locked, and secure. Other sailors come out, they go around the plane, they go under the plane, they check to make sure there's no water leaks, oil leaks, fluid leaks, we don't see any leaks anywhere on the airplane. Everything looks good, thumbs up to the catapult launch officer standing out there in the middle. The next thing that happens is there's going to be a red shirt sailor, he's going to come out, he belongs to the weapons department. right here, it says remove before flight. That's a safety pin. Every single weapon on the airplane must have one of those red pins on it. And that's a safety pin. As long as that safety pin is attached, that weapon cannot be fired. So if the pilot climbs into the cockpit, accidentally goes, oh sorry, I didn't press that button. That's not a problem. Now he's ready to go, so we want to make everything live. So the red shirt sailor holds every single one of those pins out. And then he counts them. And then he tells the pilot exactly how many of these he's holding in his hand. Because the pilot knows how many weapons were mounted on his airplane, and he wants to make sure that this guy didn't forget to pull any of those pins on. So if he's happy with the number, he shakes his head up and down. So yeah, it's a good All right. Okay, almost ready to go. So next thing that happens is we give a signal to the pilot. Well, first of all, I forgot something. It is the weight of the airplane. You, the pilot, if you're the pilot, when you first went to your ready room in the morning and you did your briefing, you have to calculate the weight of your airplane at launch. And you calculate that number and you turn it into an office. So now it's later on, you're finally up here at the catapult, ready to go. 
And at this point, the Santa's going to hold up this sign. He's going to show it to you. And we're asking you the question, are you sure that this is the weight of your airplane? This is our last chance to ask you. Because this number is very important. It will determine exactly how much steam we're going to put into that catapult system. Okay? Oh. Remember how the catapult works? Two tubes, two big pistons, and we will put high pressure, high temperature steam behind these pistons, pull this airplane up to death. And that's how we launch it. How much steam will depend on that weight. And of course, if the weight is too little, if the steam amount is too little, that's not a good thing. What would happen to the airplane? Right? Goes up to the end of the neck, falls in. How about the other way? If that's the case, why don't we just put a whole bunch of steam in that catapult and make sure that that plane takes off? Too fast? What's that? No, it's not too fast, but you know what can happen? It could go straight in the No, it doesn't go straight up. It goes straight down. No. No, what happens if we have too much steam? We're actually going to rip the most of the And the reason we know that is because we've actually done it. So that's not a good thing. We don't want too little steam. We don't want too much steam. We want just the right amount of steam. That's why that number is so important. So you look at the pilot. The pilot looks at that number. If he likes the number, he's going to shake his head and say, yep, that's a good number. Then normally what we do is we turn and we face the catapult launch officer standing out there in the middle. He sees the number and he verifies that with the catapult rule. We dial it in accordingly. All right, now we're about ready to launch. Give a signal to the pilot. Remember that little dog bone we talked about? It just snaps into it, just breaks like a brown. And 
all the rest of the steam goes into the catapult. We take this airplane from zero to 170 miles an hour, 278 feet, two and a half seconds.